Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talk. So here we see Liz Truss has resigned after 44 days. Ooh, what a shocker. Not. I've been saying for a while you're watching a pantomime. What was it? Boris Johnson was the 77th Prime Minister. Oh, and he just so happens to resign on the 7th of the 7th. Of course he would. And he hinted that he would come back in his leaving speech because... He is probably privy to the script. Now, I put up a video earlier today, this morning, called The Four Apostles, which I believe is more interesting, in my opinion, than these bunch of puppets playing pantomime. So check it out if you haven't seen it yet. But anyway, let's look at this tiresome show that people still think is all happening naturally. Liz Truss resigns as Prime Minister after 44 days. Liz Truss succeeded Boris Johnson as Prime Minister on the 6th of September after defeating Rishi Sunak in the Conservative Party leadership contest and meeting the Queen at Balmoral, it says here. I mean, did she really meet the Queen? I mean, even if you watch the speech she gives today, her resignation speech, she don't look like to be too bothered about resigning. She's not acting very well. So to me, this is very like, think of this like an everyday soap opera, a soap drama. You know, a soap drama att attempting to emulate real life like EastEnders or Coronation Street, okay? Now these television soap dramas, they're always monitoring their audience figures. They're viewing ratings. And if their viewer ratings go down, then the TV station, the production company, they start thinking of canceling the show. So the result is these shows start to panic and they start interjecting more sensational storylines, more drama, which they believe will keep the viewers' attention and maybe will draw viewers back in who they lost. But if it doesn't work, then they just keep adding more and more dramatic storylines. Then the show loses its realism and the whole show starts to decline rapidly. Simultaneously, the audience ratings drop even more and they just keep increasing the dramatic storylines and it all starts to fall apart and nobody then believes in the show anymore. And this is what this feels like. As time goes on, watching the fake stream media, you're getting hit with sensational storyline after sensational storyline in order for them to engage the public, the masses, who are actually slowly getting wise to them. They're losing the audience, so they're getting more desperate with the dramatic storylines. And this is now the latest in a long line of dramatic twists. And this uh, resignation has been telegrammed well in advance. They've also been planting seeds in the media about getting Boris back for a couple of weeks. Boris Johnson, a puppet picked because he comes across like a new version of Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill was a prime minister twice. So if Boris is playing that part of a modern day Churchill, why not just go along with that script? Here we see, I don't know who he is, some plasticine government clone talking about how his constituents want Boris back. At the weekend, and I always want to talk to my constituents and feel, see how they feel. And I went to Diwali, I went to the Great Eastern Run, I even did some campaigning. And the strong message that I got was, bring back Boris Johnson. I stood in a by-election six months before Boris Johnson, uh, uh, we won that historic mandate, that election. I came third. We were 19 points behind in the polls before Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. We face a similar situation now. Now, I don't know what the situation's going to be. I don't know the rules. I don't even know if Boris Johnson wants to stand. But we need an election winner, and we had an election winner. And, and so as far as I'm concerned, I listened to my constituents, and their message was, bring back Boris. Do you think many Conservative MPs agree with you? Well, the Conservative members certainly agree with me. We saw the uh, members uh, earlier on, it said that Boris Johnson was the most popular. Look, it's about making sure that we win as many seats as we possibly can, we get back to good government, and uh, we, we, we get back on the right track. Boris Johnson's got a mandate from the members, he's got a mandate from the country. If Boris Johnson wants to do this, uh, my constituents clearly want Boris to do this, uh, I think it would be a fine choice. But as I say, I don't know, I don't know what the situation is. I don't know if he, even if he wants it. Do you, do you not think that viewers, voters might just raise one eyebrow that a prime minister that was ousted by the Conservative Party because they were ashamed of him and didn't think that he upheld the necessary standards of high office should then be brought back because you're in effect? 
or something. I never wanted Boris to go in the first place. And you, you've nailed it. You, we are in a fix. And the last time we were in a fix, Boris Johnson got us out of that fix. I hope he can do it again. Sorry to make you have to endure listening to that, but it's clear that that is and has been the plan. But when that is, I don't know. Johnson is the Churchill clone, the wartime minister. It may not happen now. It may happen when they start upping the whole war propaganda, the World War Three, maybe. They may even have an election now, bringing Labour, because all of this change is happening. You know, we are seeing a constant uh, carousel of new faces, of people changing places in these positions. And it's all to get as much distance between the public Change the faces to confuse the public to create distance so it's not so clear who then they can blame for the big problems that are forthcoming. We may also be looking at the big reveal, which I spoke about recently in a video. If the big reveal is forthcoming, it might be easier to control with a new government in place who can then turn around and say, well, you know, we weren't in charge then. We're just trying to fix this mess. We didn't create it, you know, when in truth, like I've said before, they are two cheeks of the same mass. There is no left and right. It's the Hegelian dialectic in order to engage you. Their biggest fear is that you completely disengage from their pantomime. When these clowns are talking about the left and the right, they are talking about the left and the right hand path. They're talking about the dichotomy between two opposing approaches to magic, black magic and white magic, malicious witchcraft, the black and benevolent witchcraft, the white. This is your Freemason checkerboard floor, the chessboard, the game, actors all on a set. And what we've just seen is actress Liz Truss exit stage left. Okay, now check out my video earlier, Three False Apostles, and let us know what you think in the comments to them both, as I might do a Your Comments video on them. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to the website hugotalks.com, and I'll see you later.